Hello and welcome to episode 39 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series. If you've watched the previous few episodes, you might be saying, Alex, why are you wearing the same shirt? Why are you wearing the same shirt like three days in a row? Well, I'm recording a lot of the episodes at once together because I want to try and make some solid content for you guys. So if I can pre-record some episodes and I can focus on a bit more of the back end of the channel, especially with like the Discord community and that kind of thing, um, because there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background in case you didn't know. So that's why, more importantly, this series, for those of you who are new to the channel, is intended for me to play rapid games and talk you through my thought process while we play so that I can educate you on some of the opening ideas and obviously as we go further on in the game, some of the reasons for them, some of the reasons that I'm playing the moves that I'm playing, uh, my words for being weird. <laughs> um, and then in the post-game analysis, I can use the computer to help flesh out some of the ideas and also be able to play the moves out on the board to go deeper into the variations that I was looking at. Because obviously, drawing a bunch of arrows, saying a bunch of words is harder to follow and I'm more likely to make mistakes in my calculation that way. So, without further ado, I just want to say thank you real quick for the recent support. Let's get into the game. Okay, okay. I think this might be our first 2,000 plus opponent. Maybe wrong there. Uh, but let's try and show him what we've got with the white pieces against the French defense. Loyal subscribers of the Chess Centurion channel. You know what's coming. The Horwitz attack. And the French defense is so complicated. And there's so many different ways that you can approach it. This is definitely an odd one. And I don't think I have ever seen this response. Knight c3 is definitely playable, but I think the principled approach is just to push and go e5, kick the knight. I have never faced this position. So on move two already, we have what's pretty much a novelty. I don't think it's that good though. I have my doubts. We could play c4 to kick the knight around, but I feel like we can play that at any time. Bishop b2 is of course a move I'd like to play. c4, I would expect knight to b6, knight e7 looks too passive. So knight b6, if we go d4 then d6. And if f4, then takes, takes, and queen h4, check. And if we go g3, then queen e4, check, wins our rook. So I don't like that. Um, c4, knight b6. We don't have to go d4. We could go f4. And then if d6, we could play knight to f3. So then if takes, we can take back with the f pawn and prepare d4. I think I like that. I think I like that. I'd like to open the f file if I can. And I want my knight on f3 before I take because I need to control the h4 square so the queen doesn't end up there. So let's just check. f4, d6. I, I just assume d6 is going to happen. Knight to f3. d4. Sorry. I just gave myself two moves in a row. Takes, takes. And then we're ready with d4. Okay. Could we play bishop to b2? By the way, a4 would threaten to trap the knight. But if he's going to play d6 anyway, he's going to give himself the d7 square. So that's not really worth discussing. f4. Does he have any other moves other than d6? I don't think so. Let's do it. Let's throw some pawns into the center. Our first five moves have been pawn moves. And, you know, you can try and argue that this is an overextension. And I was well aware after knight f6 that e5 could be an overextension. But we're trying to argue that's not the case. And okay. That's interesting. 
d5 is unexpected. I don't want to take this on Poisson because I want to maintain my strong e pawn. It's interesting because he's kind of threatening to take this. Kind of. Knight c3. Takes, takes. I'm trying to cover this diagonal so we can play d4 at some point. We could just go knight f3 though. Takes, takes. We're fine. If knight f3 and d4, I'm not worried. I might just play bishop d3. I don't love knight f3 because I would like to play queen g4 to attack. That's the only concern I have. Bishop b2. Uh, I don't know. So maybe knight c3 is a good idea. If d4, I can just play knight to e4. Knight c3 takes takes. If the bishop comes to b4, we can consider queen g4. But then he can just castle. So actually, we're going to play knight f3. We're going to play knight f3. Because uh, I know the knight blocks the queen from going to g4, but if this bishop moves, then he can just castle anyway. And we don't have bishop to h6, forcing him to go g6 and win in an exchange because the f pawn is in the way. And obviously, the d pawn is in the way. So, okay, we have a massive center, a massive space advantage. This isn't a particularly friend. Uh, it's kind of resemblan resemblance. Reminiscent. It's kind of reminiscent of uh, an advanced French structure. But not all that much. I want to take with the pawn, not the bishop. Because I want to argue that his knight is misplaced. Because it has no movement. And besides, if I can get d4, bishop d3 in, my bishop's going to be very strong on this diagonal. Because remember, his, his light square bishop is terrible. Because it's the French defense. You block your bishop involuntarily on move one. You know? You know that your bishop's going to be locked in, unless you get an exchange French. But, you know, an exchange French isn't really pushing for a win with white, is it? Okay. I don't think we can go d4 because of bishop b4 check. Bishop d2, knight takes. Oh no, maybe we can. Wait, d4. It does look a little flimsy. We could go a3 to stop anything from coming here but it feels like it's very very slow and we do need to develop so maybe just bishop to b2 controlling d4 can't be a bad move right he says before he probably plays a bad move No, I think this is good. It also makes f6 breaks harder because that's, again, a typical idea in the French to break with f6. Because our bishop is now supporting our pawn's control of f6, it's going to make that more difficult. And obviously it also supports d4. Because if I can magically play d4, bishop d3 castles, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. But our opponent isn't going to let us do that very easily. One of the other problems of his position is his knight is on c6, so if we go d4, it's difficult for him to play d5, sorry, c5 to challenge me. But even if he does, there's a good chance in a lot of those positions, if we have a knight on c3, for example, that we can just push d5 and go deeper into his territory. Because the thing is, we've given up our b pawn for his d pawn, which should be good. Okay, does that not just allow d4? with a tempo. Three defenders, three attackers. It feels like he's baiting us into playing this. But 
I also kind of have to play this. d4, bishop b4 check must be the idea. But then just knight bd2. And we still have ample defense over d4, so this just seems like it's helping us. d4, I don't see where else this bishop goes. It goes back to e7. Again, bishop d3, we castle. And like I said, it's perfect. d4, bishop to b4, knight here. If he takes, we take with the queen. We're all good. Let's go. Really hoping not blundering anything. Maybe he just missed that we control this square three times. I don't know. But this is like a perfect setup. Like, look how much space we have. We could consider knight c3. But the knight looks a little bit loose. I think I'd rather go here. Yeah, I think I'd rather keep the bishop open. Makes sense. Okay, so like I said, we just need to develop the bishop and we need to castle, and then we're good. So, bishop d3. The bishop is undefended, so you got to look for tactics like this. But of course, if bishop d3 and he goes here, we don't have to take with this pawn. We could take, like, one of these. Bishop d3... I mean, he could go bishop to c5. But then we can probably sack. There might be ideas of a Greek gift, actually. Uh, like this, anyway. Might have Greek gift ideas. Let's do it. Again, I don't think I'm missing anything. I don't see how he applies more pressure to this pawn. Maybe he wants to go f6. Maybe that's his plan. But I can just castle. And if he takes, I can just take. And he still has this massive weakness. Well, actually, if he pushes f6, e6 becomes a weakness. And it's still blocking his bishop in. And b6 and developing the bishop like this is difficult to play because this knight is in the way. Um, these knights are blocking the C and B pawns from moving. And I feel like those are the pawns he needs to move to try and develop. Because if this bishop can't get out, this rook can't get out. And um, if you've watched the previous episodes of the rating climb, you'll know why that's so important. <laughs> you'll know why that's such a big deal. Um, real quick, I just want to address for anyone unaware... Um, if, if I am taking a long time on some of these moves, like bishop d3, I took like almost a minute on that. You might be thinking, Alex, why are you taking so long? Like that's quite an obvious move and you wanted to play it anyway. Yes, I know. But the goal of this channel is not for me to win necessarily. It's for me to educate. So if I have to take longer so that I can talk you through my thought process a bit more, then I'm going to do that. So that's just my little spiel on that done. F5, so not F6, but F5, which blocks this diagonal off. And if we take, black comes alive. Uh, we're not going to take, though. Taking might be the best move, but I just want a castle. And yeah, I know my, bishop, my bishop's blunted now. Fully aware. But look at his bishop. Like, jeez. I might reroute my bishop like this or something. We might try and go for d5 in the future. Uh, his pieces are just really not nicely placed. Like I say, these knights are kind of looking at nothing. Because our center is so well protected. Next court hmm? point of call, I was going to say, is probably to get rid of this bishop. So he takes without provocation. Obviously, we don't take with the knight, because then he wins um, d4. So we take with the queen. Okay, 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 okay. So he's trying to attack our bishop, because our bishop is defending d4. But I don't want to give him my bishop. 
I want to play bishop to a3. That's the move I want to play to attack his rook. And then we can move this bishop to a square like c2 to attack the knight and open up our queen's defense. Obviously, that's easy if he moves the rook, right? But we do have to check what happens if we go bishop to a3 and he takes anyway. Because if we take and queen takes, then this comes with check and he just goes up a pawn. But if knight, if a uh, bishop a3, knight d4, bishop f8, knight f3 check, rook f3. I mean, he's got to take this back, right? The bishop's pinned to the queen, but it doesn't really matter because the bishop's defended by the rook anyway. So, let's do it. Let's do it. Bishop a3. And yeah, then we're going to kick the knight out with tempo. Well, no, kicking the knight out would always come with tempo. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to move our bishop to a better square with tempo by allowing our queen to open up. And we might then complete the rerouting of the bishop to b3 to get d5 in. Because if d5 comes in and we get an exchange, the e-pawn is going to become a passed pawn. That's dangerous. So, yeah. Again, you've always just got to check. There's no kind of tactics, but the e-pawn is so well defended. There are also potential ideas of like, knight g5 and lifting a rook but there is no hurry whatsoever this is such a nice position such a nice position after knight b6 you don't want to play a move like c5 though blocking off your bishop and giving the knight the d5 square okay well he just hung his knight so yeah i kind of feel bad but obviously i have to take this I guess he just thought I was moving the bishop so my queen would defend the pawn, but obviously that wasn't the only idea. So, yeah, a bit of a shorter game for sure, but I can't just artificially inflate the length of the games because that's not how chess works. But definitely an interesting game and a line that I have not seen before. I don't think I've ever seen um, knight f6 on move 2. So what we're going to be doing is, as it was a bit of a shorter game, I'll be going really in depth on the computer analysis to really explain not only the opening, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's other videos on the channel in this opening, but I'll explain the opening quite in depth. I won't, I don't think I'm going to cover the gambit line, but I'll gambit the other lines, which include, gambit the other lines? <laughs> Go through the other lines that include knight to f6. Um, and also just go really in depth with what happened in the game and go through some of the themes of trying to punish him which I think I did very well taking full control of the center like that but certainly not a perfect game I believe the computer says I made two mistakes so let's see what those were all right so let's get into the game we have e4 e6 b3 obviously knight f6 is a very strange response to this d5 is the main response because of course it's a french right and most people are going to be thinking okay e takes d5 e takes d5 bishop b2 i can develop my light squared bishop i've got very easy development or they're thinking knight c3 defending the pawn i can push d4 knight e2 i can go c5 lot of space maybe even play e5 in the future it's very nice or Maybe they're thinking um, e5 immediately. And then black can play c5 again, take a lot of space. You get a very typical French structure. Well, that is not how this opening works. After d5, you go bishop b2. And then it's like, huh. So you're just going to give me a pawn. g7 is defended. You're not threatening to take that. And yeah, it is giving a pawn, 100%. And like I said, check some of the previous videos on the channel. Uh, it should be obvious by the titles which ones feature this opening. I might have to um, collate, actually I probably will, collate like a lot of my videos into like specific playlists for these types of openings, like I do with the A3 Sicilian. Um, and yeah, anyway, the point of this, if the gambit is accepted, is to go knight c3. And it's difficult to defend this pawn. Because you can go knight f6 and then queen e2 
and there's no good way to defend this pawn again. The only move is queen to d4. And here you can castle and set up discoveries with the knight because the bishop will be defended by the king. Or what I prefer to do is play f3 and fully gambit the pawn with an attack on the queen. Then you're going to castle and you get quite a nice attack with the open e and f files to put your rooks on. More likely, however, is that black developed not with king e7. With a move like bishop to e7, you can take straight away and win your pawn back, but you can all also just play around it with moves like castles, g4, g5, trying to displace the knight, maybe bishop g2. And this pawn, you can't defend it, right? The only way to defend the pawn is, ooh, not after this, is after d5, bishop b2, takes knight c3, is to go f5. f5 is not a good move, though, because you can go d3 or f3, uh, same as when the queen comes out to d4. d3 is a bit more accurate, though. You can gambit the pawn like this. Again, knight f3, queen e2, castle queenside, rook h e1. And the position flows so nicely, and you can get really nice control over the e5 square to keep your bishop's line of sight open and ready. Potentially hop a knight in there. The position is so easy to play. Uh, you know, the computer gives plus 0.2, but remember, you're down a pawn, and I believe white has incredible attacking chances, and I perform very well in this type of position with this opening, so I'd recommend it. Anyway... Uh, yeah, I will go over what our opponent played, but like I said, the game was quite short, so I would like to talk a bit more about the theory. After d5, bishop b2, of course your opponent doesn't have to take. One of the main moves I see a lot is knight to f3. Now, sorry, I was, I was going to say knight c6, but the problem with knight c6 is that after e5, we again had this in a previous episode, the position is actually okay for black if he finds d4, cutting the bishop's scope off. But if he doesn't find the move d4, then this knight is basically out of the game. And you can't play c5 like you typically do in French structures. So it's very difficult to challenge a pawn if it lands on d4. Like I said, the move for black is to play d4 here. And after a move like knight to f3, I feel like I played this earlier in a blitz game, actually. Um, like bishop c5, knight e7, castle. The position's fine for black, but it might be a little bit difficult to hold on to this pawn. Moves like bishop d3 are quite natural for white. And you can still generate some attacking chances like this, potentially. Instead of knight to c6, more common is knight to f6. And here again, you don't want to take because just e takes and black has a far better position because again, his French bishop now can actually get out because his pawn moves. So the move here is e5, attacking the knight. If the knight comes into e4, you can just kick the knight out. Knight goes to c5. You can play d4 even, but apparently better is f4 or g3, I don't know. Either way, this knight is quite misplaced, and development for the white pieces is very easy. I'd probably recommend moves like f4 and knight f3. Queen g4 if the opportunity presents itself. Say something like this, you could maybe go queen g4. It's not necessarily the best move, because obviously you can't play the typical bishop h6 in these uh, positions. But, you know, knight f3, this is a very easy position to play with white. Probably bring the knight into d2, bishop b2, castle. This is very typical of this opening. Now, more normal is to drop the knight back to d7. And here again, this whole... Um, well, queen g4 is the setup that is more aggressive. Technically not the best, but the idea is you make it difficult for black to move his bishop. Uh, because you'll take on g7, obviously, right? And you could play f4 and then go for the plan of queen g4. But bishop e7, queen g4, black can then castle. So you're not applying quite as much pressure. It, 
Finally, the move here is G5? Apparently is a move? Oh no, the computer just changed its mind. Okay, apparently G5 is a move though, so that's hilarious. Anyway, I recommend Queen G4, just to put pressure on the pawn. The bar should go back up a bit. I don't know why it's giving it that bad of an evaluation. But the setup is quite simple, uh, something like this. And it's just very difficult for black to develop this bishop. I won quite a lot of games, even over the board, in this type of structure with the white pieces. Because, like I say in so many of my videos, I play some offbeat openings. But even if the opponent plays the opening well, and maybe he knows a few moves of theory, he's not, one, he's not going to be experienced in the positions. Two, it's also just like, gives me a lot of dynamic compensation because... I know the plans, right? And there's a good chance he's going to have to waste more time figuring out where to go. And I actually don't have a third thing to say. Those are what I wanted to say. So, yeah, that's a typical setup on e5 and knight drops back. Anyway, our opponent seems to have played an interesting move order. He might have actually known that this was the idea, but just mixed up his move order. But yeah, knight f6 straight away. The only move to keep the advantage for white is e5. I feel like that's quite obvious. Knight comes to d5. And yeah, c4 is good. Knight goes back to b6. b4 is apparently better. But if the knight goes to b4, I assume I can just play a3. And then if the knight goes to c6, you're taking away the natural development square of this knight. But the point might be to go d6 and then bring this knight into d7. But okay, d6 is always the pawn break here, because if you don't attack my pawn, I'm going to reinforce it with f4, d4, knight f3, knight c6, maybe bishop e3 or bishop e2, and it's way too easy. So black needs to strike quickly. This is very uh, similar to an Alakine. Is it an Alakine or a Ninsovich? Or is it both? I can't remember which one's knight f6 and which one's knight c6 in response to e4. Oh my god, my arrows. In response to e4. If you understand what I mean, right? You need to break quickly. With black. So, anyway. Knight b6. f4 is a slight inaccuracy. Apparently d4 is better. But I was a bit worried about d6. Apparently I can just take this. And continue to develop normally. I guess. This is still very good. Because it's difficult for black to expand in the center. E5 can be met with C5, and E5, I assume, is met with D5. Or, oh, just Knight C3, because you can't really take, because the D6 pawn is going to become way too weak. And uh, Knight C3 stops your opponent from going E4. It also just hangs a pawn, which I completely missed, but the point is in the future, right? That's like, in future positions. I chose f4 because I was a bit worried after this that I didn't want to recapture with my pawn because then I don't want to trade queens. And I didn't want to go f4 because d takes e5. Again, if I take with the pawn, then you can take my queen. And if I take with the f pawn, then queen h4 check. And I'm in some trouble because if I go g3, then queen e4. Whoops. Bye bye to my rook. That's an overexpansion. Apparently, you can go king e2. And you're good <laughs> apparently this is equal that's amazing chess is such a great game like that like how is this equal the only piece white has developed is his king he's got a ton of pawns massively extended and yet he's good queen g4 knight f3 the position's fine um but we don't go into that i went f4 because i wanted to avoid that line and my plan was d6 Knight f3, and if black takes, then I take with the f pawn. I prepare d4, and here, queen h4 isn't a concern because my knight controls that square. And the computer agrees with me. Bishop e7, d4 is apparently bad because of c5, actually, in this particular position. Which is why I criticized my opponent's knight c6 move, because then c5 can't be played, right? My opponent was d5. You don't want to take this on passant, because then the f-pawn is silly. Bishop d6, 
Black has easy development. He's going to play e5 probably at some point. And, you know, the fact that I haven't developed any pieces, Black has developed two. He's about to castle. His queen is an easy access to develop. It's not a good way to play with the way my position is. So, uh, knight to f3 instead, which isn't the best move. Isn't the be Oh no, it is the best move. The computer's doing a madness. Knight c3 is fine as well, which I think I can... Yeah, I'm sure I considered that. I don't remember why I rejected it, but I did. But knight f3 is just as good. d takes c4, b takes c4. Again, I don't really want to take with the bishop. Because not only is this going to be a good bishop on d3 most likely. But black gets rid of his really stupid knight. And I'm closer to castling, sure. But wow, queen d3 is a move as well. Stops me from castling. I've got a trade queens now. And um, black's good. Normally if you have a lack of space in a position you want to trade pieces... And if black trades the queens, his lack of space isn't as big of a deal anymore. So, it makes sense. Of course, therefore, we take back with the b-pawn. Knight to c6. And yeah, the computer calls that good. It also gives me a massive advantage, because I just have d... I have d4. Why did I go bishop b2? Ah, because I was worried about bishop b4 check. I did calculate that this line was fine for me. But I rejected it for some reason. Because you can't take here as the bishop hangs. And if you trade bishops, then my queen takes, and then everything is well defended. Bishop b2 is in inaccurate because of knight b4? What? Oh, okay, I think the point is to get the knight out of the way so that c5 can be played. And then return the knight at some point. So yeah, it just highlights how bad knight c6 was really. Because you need to play c5 to break through this position. My opponent instead chose bishop c5. And like I said during the game, it's definitely not the move. Because d4 comes with tempo. Bishop b4 check. We just go knight bd2. Knight c3 was a move. Like I said, because the queen is defending here. But it's not quite as good is knight bd2. I actually couldn't tell you why. Uh, concretely. Queen d7 is apparently the best move. What? Okay. Uh, but the reason that I chose d2 was because to me it looked a lot more solid. And I wanted my bishop to be defending here rather than my queen. It, 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 it just felt like it made more sense to me. So I can't explain exactly why. Uh, like concretely in a calculated line but this just felt way safer basically and in the spirit of the position to keep this bishop open anyway castle bishop d3 is the move and knight d4 Ah, it wants to go c5, looking at this. But again, I can play this Desperado. Knight g5. The king, if it goes to g8, is getting pretty mated. So the king has to come up to h6. Wait. No, this is just game over. The computer's changed its mind. It thought king h6 was plus 1.5, but now it thinks it's plus 9 after queen g4. <laughs> and I think the point is not to take, because then queen takes d4. But the point is to just move the king. And if you take the bishop, I assume you're getting mated. Like this. That's pretty cool. So my ideas of a of a Greek gift sacrifice were actually valid. They were valid. And obviously um, the point is you do the Greek gift sacrifice here because if you move your bishop then queen takes d3 and black is far better. Far better. So I knew in all of these positions I had this resource if I needed it. And even if I didn't have a completely winning attack, here even if I drop my bishop back, like this is still okay. It's not great, 
but I'm not down any material, right? And queen d3 is the only move to actually get an advantage, but like I said, I was aware of these knight g5 ideas. Bishop d3, he goes f5, which I thought was actually quite a practical choice. Um, and yeah, like I said during the game, taking is the best move, and I had a feeling it was the best move. But I didn't want to try and navigate this structure. I guess the computer wants to give up f4 and just not care. Attack here. Yeah, this isn't even that good. So I actually kind of disagree with the computer, which is obviously bold to say because the computer would absolutely smack me if um, I ever played against it. <laughs> but uh, I castled, which is considered a mistake. But, okay, bishop takes c2. Knight a5 was the best move here, which is a very odd move. But again, I think the whole point is to go to c5. And here there's no ideas of taking on h7 anymore because f5 has been played, like I explained. But here the position is still fine. I mean, queen c2, c5. Might be free, apparently. And this pawn is defended well. So is this pawn. You offer a trade of knights. If you take, I assume this is pretty winning. But if you have a take here, just knight takes. The computer likes g4, which was actually on my radar, but it's so unnecessarily aggressive. Oh, you can't take with the knight, I don't think, because of bishop c5. And you self-pin. That's tough to play. No one plays that. The, the, the position is fine. He goes bishop takes d2 though, which, like I said during the game, was just odd. Because I'm probably going to play a3 anyway, and then you can take me. But takes takes, his idea was knight a4. Bishop a3 is an inaccuracy. Rook fd1 is the best move. Now why is that? If we trade... I guess I'm still good, and black just traded off one of their most active pieces, d4 is defended, b7's weak, I can look to play d5 in the future. So apparently this is bad because of knight takes d4. Now I had calculated this line, which is just plus 1. I'm up a whole exchange, and this is not a very good-looking bishop, is it? This is the line the computer likes. I guess the point is the black is very solid, and this knight is kind of impossible to kick out because my bishop's on a light square and that's on a dark square. Also, e4 is kind of vulnerable. Okay, I understand, but it's. I feel like it would just turn into a long game where I'd probably end up winning although actually i probably end up losing because it's me but mm, giving up an exchange is difficult to play very difficult so he goes rook to e8 to obviously maintain his exchange d5 is on the radar now apparently and if you take Ah, then bishop c2, you attack the knight. Knight b6, cd5. And you can't take because of bishop b3, I assume. Here, knight g5. Not the best move, but knight g5 is the simplest. And uh, yeah, this is falling apart. And your knight can't even help out in the defense because I'm going to take it. It's an interesting line. Bishop c2, therefore, is... I mean, it has the same thing in mind. B6. Can I still play D5? Ah, so knight so C4 hangs in this variation. Whereas if I go here first, and then knight here, and then I take, then knight C4 doesn't work because of this. Ah, and then bishop b3, 
Whereas in the line we played in the game, you can take back with the pawn rather than the queen. So this doesn't work. Oh, because this, yeah, okay, the c-pawn takes on d5 rather than being taken. That's an interesting nuance. Very interesting. This is why computer analysis is great, but only if you actually figure it out. You know, the computer's telling me that d5 is slightly better than bishop c2, and now I figured out why. But, you know, just looking at the numbers doesn't mean a lot unless you actually investigate it. So bishop c2 is fine, and obviously our opponent just blundered a knight. Um, like I said, I think he only really considered this move because it allowed my queen to defend d4 rather than the secondary idea of attacking the knight. But had the game gone like it should have with knight to b6, the game's certainly not over. Bishop b3 was my idea, which is the best move, trying to go d5, I assume. And it's so difficult for black to move. Say he plays like h6, which is one of the best moves. D5 and like, we're getting pretty slaughtered here. He's like, look at my bishops. These are incredible bishops. Might be eight. Like, I can do this with check, but there's also no rush. I can just continue building up pressure with these kinds of moves. Uh, I think this really showcases the power of the bishop pair. And maybe if the game had gone on longer, we would have been able to do that. But it didn't. And I'm not going to complain with a win. Although I would have liked to have seen how the game went. But it's a good game nonetheless. And like I said, I'd highly recommend the opening. I hope the really, eh, not that long, but fairly long analysis was useful for people who either play the opening and just want a recap of some of the ideas and some of them a bit more in depth. And for people potentially considering playing the opening, which it is part of one of the Gotham E4 courses. And like I say, I'd recommend it. He doesn't go over absolutely everything, but he gives you a great foundation. And that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Really appreciate it. For those of you who are already subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And for that one commenter who keeps on telling me, I'll hit a pose at the end of the video for you. Thank you for watching.